there it is. That's the laser. <laughs> that table contains all the components for the laser. Then the three colors, there's red, green, and blue for um, RGB, and you know that RGB makes up all the colors in the spectrum. Um, like you would on a TV screen or an LCD screen. There's always the R, the G, and the B. Um, so we have a red, green, blue laser. And they basically shine up off this table. And they bounce against this mirror right here. And then this mirror reflects it back onto this screen back here. Now, this, this whole laser setup was done mainly by my dad but I'm gonna show it to you on my YouTube. I'm doing this video for him. Um, I'm gonna do another video when he's here so he can explain it to you in more depth. Um, but I'm gonna do this one on my own just about what I, like, what I know about this thing. So anyway, if you come over the table, you can see that um, there's one module right here. That's one laser. There's one here, which is somewhat dismantled. And then there's um, another one here, which I don't know much about, but I'll try my best to explain it. Um, so here's the first one. Basically how this works is contained within this metal thing right here um, is a glass or a plexiglass, I'm not sure, um, cover right there. And behind that glass cover are a bunch of individual diodes. And if I can zoom in, you can probably see them in there. You can see all those diodes back in there. Each of those diodes is equivalent to a diode that you would get out of a DVD player or something like that, like a Blu-ray disc. So basically what happens is those diodes shine in there. And if you see these metal um, curved things right here? What happens is the each beam comes out and hits a mirror that's on top of those metal things right there which directs all the beams from this direction because normally they would just shine out of the box like this like this way um, it directs all of them this way so that's what each of those little blocks are for right there then these things on the front are adjustment things that you you screw and you unscrew in order to change the alignment of each of these and that's just so you can make sure that you get the beam um, properly aligned like all in one and so then what happens is it comes from over there goes this way um, this thing this thing is meant to go in front of this one but for some reason it's there right now but anyway just ignore that so that shouldn't be there this comes out and it hits that that one back there and that one converts it all of the beams into one beam and then once it's one beam then it hits that mirror that's down there and then that mirror if i got it right let's see well that mirror right there I don't know why it's not focusing, but the one back there, with all the beams combined, the beam bounces out of that mirror, like this is not meant to be here, like I said, and it bounces out, and it comes down here, and we had a scanner here, and the, the scanner has now been moved over here, temporarily, but it used to be right over here, in order to align with that mirror. And so what would happen is, the beam would come out, out of here, and it would hit, the scanner you can see the two mirrors on the scanner and this scanner would then shine up there to the mirror and then over to the screen over there so basically that's how the red one works this one's I think the red one this one over here is the blue one um, so I made a mistake I'm sorry this one uses CD burner lasers this one uses Blu-ray disc burners. That's why it's blue and that one's red. Um, so, yeah, this one's been dismantled, but the fundamental like um, concept behind it, it's the same as this one. It works the same way. Um, you may also notice that 
Back there you see tubes going into it and a bunch of wires. The wires are for the lasers, obviously, but you see tubes going into it. So what are, what are those tubes for? Well, they're actually for cooling because there's so many diodes in a small place like that that are being run at um, more power than they're designed to be run at. So this entire metal thing gets hot. So uh, he's designed it so that the water goes through this this block thing it's like hollowed out in the in the inside and it goes through this block thing to cool it off so you can see the tubes go back here and they go down and then they go down like back here and down there there's like a pump and a radiator and stuff like that so what happens is it pumps the water through the radiator and then the water comes back up the other tube which is over here so it's just like a cycled system and no it doesn't use like refrigerant or anything it's just normal water because uh, we didn't need it to get that cold um, we've actually done experiments um, with a cooler to see if we could make it even colder than um, than needed and found out that actually that changes the color of the diode by um, by basically lowering the temperature, you lower the wavelength of the diode or something like that. Uh, and I don't know too much about this stuff. Um, just like I said, I'm gonna make another video um, with more detail because uh, my dad will be explaining how he did this and because he knows a lot more about it. Um, so I think that's it for this video. I mean, I can show you a few more things about this. Um, we have right here a power supply for that one over there and then the power supply for the other one and then right here we have the power supply for the green i forgot i forgot to mention the green laser the green laser is this one right here <laughs> yeah the that's the red that's the blue and that's the green just that that box um the green one we decided to just go with a single already built laser unit so currently our green laser is not as good as the other ones, but um, it's still sufficient for the shows. Like the beam is kind of fat and it's not really focused, but it, it works for now. We're gonna end up changing that later. Um, but yeah, so that's what that one is for. That's for the green laser. And then that one down there, don't have no clue what that's for, that he added that without me knowing. This uh, is a power supply for, I know, is for the cooling fan. Um, and then we have over here, another power supply that I don't know what it's for either. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the setup. And uh, so anyway, um, like I said, we do shows with these lasers. We use a scanner to produce an image on that, on that screen, like I said. Um, so how do we do that? Well, basically, we have our computer set up over here. Um, we have, it's a pretty crappy computer, but it doesn't need to be good. Um, we have old IBM keyboard, old monitor, and a Dell with a Pentium 3 and like 512 megs, I think. But anyway, um, that's the computer that we use to run this whole system. Um, we use Pangolin software. Um, it's called Pangolin Quick Show. Um, that's the old version, and then there's a new version that, that came out, and we're using that now too, but I forgot the name of it. Um, and so yeah, basically what we do is we design our laser shows on this computer, and it sends it to the scanner, which is over here, and then displays it over there. So we can do whatever kind of shows we want. You can, if you um, have Pangolin software, you know you can go on their site and you can download pre-made stuff um, and play it. Um, and then you can make your own shows to go with music and stuff like that. And so that's about it for the laser thing. For our music, our music stuff is done on the other side of the room. It's behind these curtains over here. We have two uh, speakers, or four actually. We have one speaker there behind that part of the curtain. We have one behind that over there. And then we have two on the bottom as well. So we have a total of four speakers over there. So as we're doing the show, we also add music and effects to it. Okay, in this part of the video, I'm gonna show you um, how the scanner setup works and what we use for it. So over here, you can see the scanner and the mirror that it bounces off of. 
and you can see that it uses some ribbon cables one for the X and one for the Y and it goes over here and it goes into this box right here with a fan on top basically inside of it right in down in there is where the um, scanner controller is and that scanner controller is powered by this power supply over here and it is controlled with a computer um, with uh, Pangolin Beyond software um, so basically what happens is we have the wires over here and they go into a phone line cable we used a phone line cable for this so it goes from that and goes into this phone line cable then it runs over here and comes over here and you can see it's combined with another cable that goes down there I think that's to control the brightness of the lasers and the other cable is to control the X and Y positions and they both come at least that's what I think I'm not positive about that and then they both both these telephone wires come over here and they go into this and basically what this is is it's just a, a standard computer power connector um, you know like a parallel port or whatever and these phone lines are tied into this and we wired them up according to the specifications um, and basically they go into this box and this box converts from USB cable into parallel port I don't know if that's necessary but um, that's how the pangolin people designed it uh, I think you can see yeah, CP so it's a big P right there that's for pangolin it's a P-A-N-G-O-L-I-N I believe and um, they make a lot of laser show related stuff and that's what we're using for this so it goes back over here on um, the USB cable and it goes back into this computer um, this is the computer that we're actually using to do our shows now we're not using that old Dell anymore because it became like too bloated up and junky so we decided to leave that one alone and move all our equipment over to this computer over here which is an AMD Athlon uh, 64 dual core uh, 3.2 gigahertz I think 4 gigs of RAM something like that um, and so we do all our laser shows on this one now and so I'm gonna boot it up and I'm gonna show you the software that we use and while that's starting up um, I can show you we got a giant monitor over here um, 1080p well up to 1080p and so this is where we design some well we're trying to design some of our shows but um, for some reason the new pangolin software isn't acting nicely I don't know it's just weird like when you try to draw something it doesn't seem to save it so we're gonna have to figure that out but um yeah so it's starting up I gotta turn on the screen here I should do it no oh yeah there we go okay so it's booted up already I have um OS called micro XP installed on here so it starts up pretty quickly um I don't have video capture software on this computer though so I'm just gonna do it with the handheld camera um for now um so I'm gonna start up our program it's this one it's called laser show designer beyond it's by pangolin takes a while to load up but the uh, previous versions did too so that's not much of a difference okay yeah 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 whatever okay alright so this is basically what it looks like um, they give you a bunch of different like little cues right here with different samples of animations and stuff and then you can also create your own uh, tabs up here and make your own shows with it. Um, we have a tab here where I just experimented by making a circle. Um, I've tried to make other things, but I haven't been able to because there's something wrong with the software. But anyway, this is what we use uh, to display our laser show. And um, usually because, like I said, we haven't gotten it to, um, to work uh, to be able to draw on it um, we usually just play pre-made shows so up here we have a lot of um, stuff that we downloaded off the site right here 
and uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it shows the shows and allows you to um, manipulate the scanner, um, the plane that the scanner is um, scanning onto. And in another video, um, my dad is going to be here and he's going to explain how that's done. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to show you the software um, just so you know how it works, what it looks like. And um, yeah, so I think that's all I'm going to show. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's about it. So, oh, and it, it also has a lot of features like um, to convert images into laser shows and all that kind of stuff that you might want to do uh, for a logo or something. Like if you had a company and you wanted to convert your logo into a laser show, you could do that using this trace feature that it has, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So, so that's pretty much how that works. Um, I guess I could show you a little more of the cooling system now that it's lit up from this end because um, I didn't show you before exactly how that goes it goes down here and you can see there's the radiator that I talked about um, it goes into that block it has two fans on top of it as you can see there are those um, what are they called like muffin fans or whatever something like that but there are those giant ones um, I believe they were once used to cool off a fish tank actually I'm not sure, but I think that's what they were used for. And there you can see there's the pump. That's what pumps the stuff, the uh, water around to cool it off. That's the back. Um, I don't think I ever showed you the back of these modules. That's where all of the wires go in to power all of the diodes. And over here, some controllers. I believe that's to dim and brighten the laser um, in order to control the color. So. Like I said, we have the R, the G, and the B. So, like, if, for example, you dim down all the red if you wanted to make, like, a bluish color, or, or I mean, a, like a magenta, I think, or a yellow. I don't know. I'm not good with that. But you know what I mean. Like, you can dim down certain colors in order to make whatever color you want. And you don't have to do this. I mean, the software does it for you. So, um... When I use this, I can just show an image up and it'll handle that on its own. Um, and then you can see the wires coming out of that one too. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There's an extra power supply that we're not currently, or yes we are using. It's for that, um, for that fan actually. Before I said that that fan was powered probably by one of those things, but actually the fan is powered by this thing. Um, so yeah, it's just a standard um, CPU cooler fan, I believe. I uh, got it off Newegg, and um, so it just we mounted it on top of this thing to uh, cool off those. So yeah, that's about it for this. Um, so comment on, on this video if you're interested and you want to see more about how this laser show works. Um, later on, I'll be uploading another video uh, where my dad explains this in more depth. And I'll also be doing some actual laser shows later on so you can actually see this thing in action and how it works, all that. So uh, if you're interested, subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.